Welcome. We have a musical story time for you with Mr. Oskin, the remarkable Farkle McBride. Think about what advice you may have for Farkle McBride in this story. And the remarkable Farkle McBride is written by the actor John Lithgow. He's also recited this story. Um, and it's illustrated by C. F. Payne. Let's jump into this musical story, The Remarkable Farkle McBride, by John Lithgow, illustrated by C.F. Payne. <clears throat> oh, the pity the... Oh, the, let me start over again. Oh, the pity the prodigy Farkle McBride, no matter what instrument poor part... Poor Farkle tried, whether strumming or blowing or drumming or bowing, his musical passions were unsatisfied. When Farkle McBride was a three-year-old tyke, all freckly, bony, and thin, he astonished his friends and his family alike by playing superb violin. He went readily deedly deedly dee with all the strings at his side, and readily deedly deedly dee the remarkable Farkle McBride. But when he was four, Farkle played it no more in spite of his parents' beseeching. He shattered the records and he used to adore, and he smashed up the resin and ripped up every score. He threw the fiddle and bow to the living room floor as he shouted, Enough of your screeching! When Farkle was five, his melodical gif once again bore rhapsodical fruit. The woodwinds inspired his spirits to lift as he rapidly mastered the flute. <clears throat> He went rootily tootily tootily too with all of the winds at his sides and rootily tootily tootily too the remarkable Farkle McBride. But at six, Farkle flung his flute into the lake, notwithstanding his lyrical trill. He stamped on the dock till you'd think it would break. That's it! He exclaimed, I've had all I could take. The tootling gives me a brutal headache. It's so wimpy and whiny and shrill. When Farkle was seven, a different sound rekindled his musical flame. He became the most expert trombonist around, and the boulevards buzzed with his name. He went roompity doompity doom 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 with all of the brass at his side. Roompity doompity doom doom doom, the remarkable Farkle McBride. But at eight, he declared to his parents' despair, and as everyone else might have guessed, I can't stand the trombone with its blat and its blare. That racket is more than my eardrums can bear, so return it or throw it away. I don't care. I despise it just like all the rest. When Farkle was nine, both his father and mum were bursting with pride and affection, for Farkle learned xylophone, cymbal, and drum, the entire percussion section. He went boom, bash, clang, bash, clash, and the clamor that he could provide Tinkly bong boom bumity crash the remarkable Farkle McBride. But soon he fell prey to his usual gloom, despite all his praise and his flattery. First a sigh, then a sulk, then a frown, then a fume, then an ear spilling tantrum that emptied the room. I can't take it, he bellowed. The crash and the boom and the clang and the bang of the battery. For Farkle at ten, howsoever renowned, reached the end of his musical tether. But then he discovered his favorite sound, musicians all playing together. It happened like this. The conductor caught cold on the day of a major recital. You've got to replace him, young Farker was told. Your cooperation is vital. So he took the baton and he gave the downbeat and kaboom, the foundations were shaken. By glorious music, bombastic and sweet, that filled up the hall and spilled into the street. Music that brought the whole crowd to its feet from the instruments he had forsaken. They went readily, rudely, vumbrade, bang! Bravo, all the specters cried. Diddly, diddly, doodly, doom, pack, clang. The remarkable Fargo McBride. Since that sparkling night... Maestro Farkle McBride conducts all the instruments he ever tried. His happy heart sings to brass drums, wings, and strings. The remarkable Farkle at last satisfied. The End Again, written by the remarkable John Lithgow. I hope you enjoyed our musical story. This is Mr. Oskins, Mr. Oskins saying, be well, enjoy music, and all the creative parts of books and life.